Alrighty, hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Honorability Time. I am your host and published author, uh, Josias Abril. With us, we have Logan. Logan, my dude, so how does it feel, before we uh, get to know you a little bit, how does it feel um, to be on a podcast? This is your first podcast, right? Yes, it is. Yeah. How does it feel? How does it feel to be on a podcast, to have your voice heard around the world? Well, I hope that my voice is uh, very the- um, very uh, therapeutic in a sense. Um, I'm not sure if it is. Like I said, this is my first time like on a podcast. I've listened to uh, you know a couple maybe, but most of them are like joking in a manner, nothing – no, no, like serious topics. I actually remember for my summer internship this past summer, I was being a park ranger, and a lot of that was just like driving around in a truck and from getting like park A to park B, and then mm-hmm. doing a loop around, getting back to park A for patrolling. And I would just like, okay, I'm just gonna listen to podcast, um, and just like at least have like some other group of people talking, yeah. just to drown out like the boringness. So hopefully, I can do the same thing is that for anyone listening this <laughs> right right yeah dude that's something that um i think it's pretty cool because i remember i messaged you and i was like i think that is so cool you were like interning with the park ranger i was like that is literally so cool like me being a criminal justice major um we have a lot of people in class shockingly um that are wanting to go into the park ranger. And the reason why I say shockingly is because like when I think of criminal justice, I'm thinking of like law and order or police um, officers. And yeah, we had a lot of people in class who, um, you know, decided to become a criminal justice major because they developed a passion while watching law and order. And then you have, you know, those who want to be police officers. And then you have a lot that wanted to do park rangers. So I was like, that is so freaking cool. Well, you'll be surprised to at least learning as a park ranger. It wasn't I wasn't with the like National Park Service. I was with the Corps of Engineers, which is it's still a federal go- it was still a federal like government job. But yeah. you'll be surprised at all the things that go on, at least in our nation's parks. Mm. Some good, some bad, some very like, okay, as a park ranger, at least for the Corps of Engineers, like we're not um we're not police, we're not like law enforcement. And so sometimes in situations, we're the ones calling 911 to tell them, hey, you need to get over here and get this person out, which is kind of like most people don't realize that and don't like don't just go up to a park ranger and do something like that. Obviously, their whole role is to make sure people don't make people are aware of their decisions and they have consequences for either the good or bad. And they just want to keep everybody safe and they don't want to have people banished from their from a park and never being able to go enjoy that land but we we did have some people at least for the park i was working at i just kind of we litter around unfortunately you're just kind of Mm. come up to after the scene of where stuff happens right from you know just picking up litter to oh my gosh like someone's going to be drowning soon type situation but it's just fighting the park ranger it was like Mm. it's more than just about um walking around or driving it's literally making sure people are making smart choices that they may have never been aware of. Before. Yeah. Interesting. You know, I never really thought about that, that like there's so much more that goes into like being park ranger. That is so cool. Okay. I asked this next question with all seriousness, all sincerity. Um, Bigfoot. Is that a, something that's talked about something to prep for something to keep on hush for so at least working technically for the government um i was not cued in on any relative existence of bigfoot but i'm pretty sure he wouldn't survive in texas knowing that he would most likely be roadkill by the nearest f-150 but yes. um maybe in another state maybe yeah. that doesn't have as much power um obviously there was some article that actually showed up recently like um in colorado some like couple i just saw the headline i didn't read the full article but some couple's romantic hike in the color uh colorado woods or area 
they apparently found like some giant hairy creature and people were saying it was Bigfoot. Yeah. I, I don't know if that's true or not, but I can neither um, deny nor agree that the existence of like Bigfoot is mm. out there. You might, of course, you got to say there might be the Yeti out there or the Chupacabra, right. but at mm -hmm. least for um, the Dallas Fort, at least for the South uh, Dallas Fort Worth area, yeah, Bigfoot, he's not making it out there. <laughs> right, right. I. There is something that I cannot say for the world to hear. Um, but I will say this. I already believe that Bigfoot exists. Um, but there is something. The, the, the credible source, I cannot say. Um, worldwide. Because it's worldwide. But um, I, I can say this, though. Allegedly, I already believed in Bigfoot. Without any proof, I already believed in Bigfoot. So that's all I'm going to say there. So I just thought that was really interesting because, you know, I never I never really heard about Bigfoot's sightings in Texas. I'm not saying there isn't. I just never really heard about it. Um, and the first thing that came to my mind, and like, we love the Second Amendment here. So I'm just like, uh, Bigfoot, if you ever did show up, more than likely you're going to get hit with a gun. Oh, yeah. And not yeah. the rubber kind, the full right. <laughs> military grade treatment. <laughs> right, yes, exactly. And, ugh, man, I love me some Texas. Okay, um, so Logan, um, so tell us a little bit about you, Logan, where you're from, you know, your major. Um, and then I, I also, from my understanding, I also know you have uh, your own business. Yes, that is true. So, uh, like I said, my name is Logan Russell, and I am hailing, I hail from the swamps of Southeast Texas, otherwise known as Orange. It's right alongside the uh, Texas-Louisiana border, so we have a unique feature of Orange being the first and last town in, uh, one of, at least being one of the first and last towns um, along the I-10 interstate um, mm. highway. Um, in case you're maybe not aware, if you know where Beaumont is, it's about like another um, 40, 45 minutes, depending how fast you go. Um, That's my university, folks. Orange. Yep, Lamar. Lamar's has a lot of effect in our, at least in our orange area. We actually have a Lamar community college in the area. I don't know the quality of it, but we have one there. And along with that, if you know where Houston is, you know, it's about a hour and a half drive. <laughs> East, and then yeah. you're you're hitting Orange and also Louisiana. But I go to Texas A&M University. I am currently a senior in majoring in Recreation, Parks, and Tourism Sciences, otherwise known as RPTS. I call it the uh, fun major or the refugee major because I originally came in for engineering, and after my first semester of trying to learn coding and uh, calculus along with chemistry it was uh too much and i switched over to rbts where of course it was during like um post you know it was post quarantine so classes for majority of it was online some of it was in person and having all my engineering classes were just kind of like meh they were definitely not as like socially engaging and then right and then i switched over to rbts and i'll, I'll never forget my uh, first professor and despite like COVID and everything, we're all wearing masks. He's like, all right, it is our first class activity to get up, stretch and talk to each other. And so that was my introduction to my major and very much glad that I made the switch. And right now I'm also minoring in urban planning. And the, the whole uh, choice between that major and the minor is my um, aspiration right now is to return back to my hometown in Orange to work within the city government for sustainable and smart city planning mm -hmm. to create uh, more pedestrianized, walkable, uh, mixed use environments, and to honestly better the quality of the life of our citizens in the area, make sure kids actually have independence, they can go out without having, they can take bikes around and give people options for affordable housing that doesn't cost them an arm and a leg where they don't, they don't need to be tied to a car in order to live. And hopefully I can 
expand this to more than just orange, but to the 409 area. And ultimate goal would there would hopefully to be having like public transit all throughout mm -hmm. the area, like trains throughout the Golden Triangle, which is yeah. including mm -hmm. my hometown, uh, Beaumont, and then like other parts like Port Arthur, Needleland. It's it's an interesting dynamic, but um, urban planning is definitely kind of like it's like RPTS, it's kind of like the fun major, I call it, and then urban planning is just like, you learn about some of its background and history, and it's really depressing about some of the things that's happened to the United mm -hmm. States, like urban planning with mm -hmm. highways bulging down, basically culturally historic neighborhoods, unfortunately those belonging to minority races, and it's just like, oh my gosh, we messed up here, but then people keep on building more lanes, which causes more mm -hmm. traffic, and that's a whole can of worms, but that's a topic for maybe another podcast. But the, um, um, and I plan on doing a master's in urban planning as well, back in again at AM, and that would allow me to continue my baking business. So I bake and sell uh, gourmet cookies of a variety of flavors. My favorite one to make is this salted caramel chocolate chip and toffee cookie and i call it the start line mm -hmm. and my cookie baking or my cookie business began last year as a junior at AM, and right now it's been going for about a year so i'm trying to see where exactly i can take that and ideally i want to open up back home in orange since we do not have like the we don't have like third places that are local mm -hmm have culture or have like an atmosphere where people can gather, hang out, mm -hmm. like just rec either recreate or just um, do homework, study, talk, maybe have dates. Mm -hmm. We just don't, we're really devoid of that, um, which is also why I want to work with the city of Orange to, hey, we need, I want to open my business here, but yeah. we need development so it's not just me, but other people can do that. But um, my recipe started with uh, my grandma, actually, she created a cookie recipe that uh, that she ripped off of the back of a Nestle Toll House recipe sometime, like, I don't even know, like, probably in the, probably in, uh, probably in the 20th century. I never got to meet her since I was born very late in my parents' life, but um, my grandma passed down the cookie recipe to my mom, and then she passed it down onto me, which uh, I was very, I'm very much a cookie fanatic, and when she taught me the recipe how to make cookies or at least this recipe it was just for chocolate chips and then i created my own cookie flavors with some of the stuff i saw in stores and that was how i made the start line because it was my first original cookie and from there i pitched the idea of selling these cookies along with some other flavors at the time um as a fundraiser for my cross country team back in high school which <gasps> you ran cross country too yeah, I did. Same. Okay, sorry. Continue. No, you're good. And uh, yeah, I ran cross country for sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school. And then I also ran track long distance freshman, sophomore, and junior year. Uh, senior year of high school, I had a foot injury or I had some foot surgery that put me out for the rest of the year. But I'm still I'm running to this day and I still enjoy it. But going back on track, the uh, cookie baking yeah, cross country team loved the idea, and we were able to get some new equipment, gear, and some good, some well needed merch. We actually got some custom backpacks from doing um, the cookie sales my junior and uh, senior year. Came back, or when I came to AM, I was just making it for friends and family. And uh, it was really interesting. I went to a trip to New York, and that was with um, my cousin who lives in the Manhattan area, and she took me to some of the local bakeries up there. and. One of them was, um, um, is it Le I'm trying to make sure I'm pronouncing the name right because I was calling the wrong thing the entire time. Um, Levian, um, bake it was Levain, uh, Levain, yeah, Levain Bakery. And they were like these giant, like, they're apparently it's their own brand of cookie sewer style. And I wanted to emulate that, or I wanted, it really got me to thinking like my cookies could be so much better. And I worked on the recipe a little bit more throughout the rest of my sophomore year. My, friends said you need to start selling these and during that like summer before starting junior year while doing another internship at the same time I was literally trying to figure out how exactly to make this like a business or at least like yeah. throwing out everything like flavors pricing how I'm gonna do stuff for, for like trying to make like someone of a business plan 
as what the class basically what applying the con you know course concepts and actually education yeah. to create my own business which oh my gosh i was like my major is actually doing something <laughs> yeah and dude. first off you are so cool logan i'm just i'm not even saying that dude you are literally so cool i'm just sitting here the whole time just like nodding my head i'm just living my best life right now dude if I'm having a bad day, I should totally just, like, call you and be like, Logan, just tell me about the greatness that you experienced. That is so awesome. Oh, my gosh. No, seriously, though, like, I, that, anything, um, when people are accomplishing anything or just winning or just trying, oh, my gosh, I just love seeing that on like social media and stuff like that it just makes my great days greater makes my bad days good so that's pretty cool um folks um your um businesses and also your personal instagram if you want your personal instagram in the episode description below but your um your uh, cookie business instagram will be in the episode description below whether people live around mm -hmm. or not it'd be great to just follow and to you know get hungry by just, you know, watching um, your business Instagram like I do. Oh, yeah. um, I forgot to mention my business name. It's called Runner's High Cookies. And, of course, like I mentioned, it was the baking started because of my cross-country um, oh, yeah. or my, that cross-country fundraiser. And I do – I still run to this day marathon training. And I it just kind of rolled off the tongue, you know, yeah. Runner's High Cookies. And fortunately, no one took that domain name. Um, so I am, I have the domain name. And that's really nice. So yes. it's, uh, I like the name. Um, I like my branding, or at least I got, I got some good help in getting that started. And so now it's uh, up to me to keep that uh, going. Yeah. I'm proud of you, dude. Look at where you're at now with it. Look at where you're at now with it. That's super dope. Um, all right, folks. Okay, so folks, before we get into the... Uh, what the episode's going to be about. Folks, check out these earphones. Check out these headphones, folks. I, 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 for those who are listening to the audio, the video will be in the episode description below, which will be a YouTube video of the podcast. But folks, I just want you all to know, um, I just got these a couple days ago because the, the software where I record the podcast it updated and the microphone all just went all over the place. So I had to buy these headphones. Folks, I felt like a gamer ever since. I just wear this around the house and I just live my best life. Um, I feel like I am an awesome gamer. Um, and I hate Fortnite, but I've been playing Fortnite just because of these headphones. Still suck um, at Fortnite, but... I was Folks, gonna say, did you get any? Uh, did you get any victory royales with the RGB settings? <laughs> no, I haven't even killed anyone. I don't even know how to really do that. Um, I go out into the storm and I end up dying because I don't know how to get out. But with these headphones, it just makes everything all right. Yes, I feel like a commentator. I can just commentate on football and stuff like that, even though I don't know what's happening. Okay. Um. All right. So, Logan, what are we talking about today? So. You know, it's we're gonna be talking about uh, the topic of finding hate and hope in the midst of adversity. Mm. Finding hate and hope in the midst of adversity. Um, there's like, I have multiple perspectives based off my experience on that. Um, so it's just not. It doesn't just mean one thing to me. And that's what I love about like the discussion topics. It's very broad because it can mean multiple things to like different people. Um, but uh, Logan, what stood out to you about that topic? Like, how does that topic, what is your experience with that topic? Well, unfortunately I do have some experience in that topic and you know kind of um you really don't think or at least right now I at least up until I came to college I've had a pretty much a pretty like easy life or I say easy pretty much a non-confrontational lifestyle where it was just wake up go to school and uh, just well, after school you just go back home parents watch cartoons maybe eat snacks 
and high school I kind of changed up a little bit throwing cross country into the mix and training but and then it came down to choosing where to go to college basically mm-hmm. what am I going to do for the rest of my life and mm-hmm. you know originally it was engineering and um, all the schools that I applied to were did have some good engineering programs and majority of them were in Texas of course I got some good scholarships the a was technically the last school that gave me my acceptance letter which was uh, very interesting because I was also sick with the flu for the second time in less than a month <laughs> and I was like you gotta be kidding me I waited six months for them basically to tell me like the call of engineer the college of engineering is full and they basically will have to send me to either like the satellite colleges or or maybe like I don't know I'd call them the satellite colleges like AM Corpus Christi or like AM right. um there's like different AM yeah, Kingsville like yeah it's like part of the system that AM mm-hmm. has or um you know go to the you you know take part of you know Blinn's uh, Relis team program which mm-hmm. I took myself to compose myself and I was like okay what's the second option? I looked it up and I'm like, oh, I get to go to A&M, but I just have to travel like to Rel- this Relis campus that's like 20 minutes away from the university. I'm like, okay, that's fine. And what also made me choose or basically made me have, you know, solidified decision for A&M was that I wanted to be a part of the Corps of Cadets at the time. And the Corps of Cadets at A&M is the heart of basically the university, the most cultured, and that's you know AM was originally a military college the corps cadets carried mm-hmm. out a lot of the is a, the lifeblood of the university with taking care of our mascot reveille to performing a lot of our more our our more heartfelt traditions with silver caps mm-hmm. and um along what's the other tradition oh yeah um muster i completely forgot about that yeah muster i go mm-hmm. to that every year and i'll get into the reason for that and it's um yeah, there it's more than just the military lifestyle. It's, of course, you get to be a student at the end of the day. It's very unique. And I was definitely sold on the marketing um, for that lifestyle. And coming into a and I was still trying to that I basically spent that entire summer where we were getting out of quarantine and everything, worrying about COVID um, training for that experience. You know, I couldn't really I was done with school. I wasn't really working a job. So I just was just training, running again. I got over, I was recovering from my foot surgery and I was back up to running good, like 20 to 30 miles a week. I was getting, I noticed that I was getting like physically stronger, like build wise. I can, I was lifting for the first time and at least for being nothing but like basically a lean person, I was developing some muscle and I was like, okay, I can actually you know, apply this to more than just like workouts, like maybe, you know, if we got teardowns for events or just doing anything, I actually help people. But um, first day in A&M, it was the Cole FOW or freshman orientation, very freshman orientation week, and all my expectations were subverted. And this isn't meant to bash the core and everything, but it was just not for me at the end of the day, the lifestyle. And it was just for me, it was a place that I didn't, I wasn't comfortable staying in. Right. Um, we had it to where, like, yeah, we can, we can talk to, we can talk normally to our fellow class year twenty four, but our upperclassmen, we just, we really couldn't talk to them. It was very rigorous, kind of like this. The v- rules were very rigorous to where it's almost just like they want you to basically fail to build you back up but some of the rules were just like you're supposed to greet an upperclassman you know always but there are unit was saying like if you see us like half a mile away you gotta not even sorry if you see us like basically like 800 feet away or maybe like you know if you see us like you're supposed to know where their presence is and you got to state their full name and everything it was very confusing because you can barely tell who which upper class we were talking to because all you would see is basically just you know you would be wearing a mask the entire time and then all you would see is just their nose and eyebrows and it's like oh my gosh who, are, who am i talking to yeah and yeah you couldn't just be you couldn't just be relaxed with them because then they would start it was just very it was a very degrading environment to be in as a freshman i really did not see myself becoming a 
leader in that environment and right. the values that they were teaching, I just, I just didn't see it at the time. And, you know, I was going home back a lot. I was going back home a lot, you know, making a three hour car ride a to and from um, College Station in Orange because I just, you know, back home, I just felt more at peace knowing mm -hmm. that like it was just a calmer environment. I didn't have to worry about uh, being constantly tensed up, stressed, or even having to worry about like an upperclassman just randomly start digging into me just mm -hmm. for no good reason other than just because they thought it'd be funny or maybe fun for them. But it was a uh, very much misled on the marketing for what freshmen and even if I'd say for sophomore year, what that would have been like. And the only time I really enjoyed being in the core was in the marathon team where they dropped all the BS. They just, they let us be the team captain, let us be normal people to each other. I remember one time I was talking to somebody and I couldn't tell who was like a junior with the haircut, but then he told me it was a sophomore and I, I visibly like coiled back a little bit because I was expecting him to start bashing me again, but yeah, or the or sophomores, at least for our units, uh, we had to wear, you know, basically on a totem pole. Like freshmen are basically the peasants, they're at the bottom, sophomores, juniors, seniors, and then like our mascot rev least on top of everything top on top of everybody. But uh, it was um it's definitely kind of hard to go to football games now, um, and kind of cheer for the core, knowing at least from my experience what goes on behind closed doors for units. Mm -hmm. But not saying they're it's not to say it's a failure, but it was just wasn't for me. The core does a lot of good things for other people, but right. when it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Right. And this goes into after leaving the core, there was just like no safe. There was no like net. You were mm -hmm. basically just on your own. They just make sure you basically have 48 hours. Once you actually confirm a place where to live and I was going to live on campus, um, mm -hmm. you have basically 48 hours to decide like, okay, you know, you need to get all your stuff, get out. And they, I can't remember all the papers I signed, but it was like, you just can't, there's something you basically sign like, oh, were you hazed or whatever, or, you know, the line between hazing and just harassment is, I feel like it was very much blurred. I, mm -hmm. I was not hazed in my experience, but the, I was basically, you know, you can say a lot of times, a lot of the treatment that we get as freshmen is harassment and whether that builds character or not, I don't know. I'll leave that up to the researchers to decide and right. maybe mental health studies. Mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. our uh, men and women that go through that treatment but right. going back on the topic you know i was living at dunn and um i really didn't have that much friends at the time fresh being in the core it was kind of like you take up a lot of time and of that you basically you do the workouts you go do your homework and then you need to get sleep right away or else you're going to be feeling the next day or you're going to be feeling the consequences of your actions if you don't get enough mm -hmm. sleep and um yeah it was just very it was a very lonely first semester at a right. um engineering wasn't helping obviously with grades um just kind of like that kind of like facing regret like oh i i left the core like i don't know what to do now like i'm kind of a quitter in that sense and mm. you know my i was was living i was at first living with somebody in the new dorm I was at, but then I knew him for about a week and he said, he's going to go see family. And I was like, okay, bye. A week passes by and he never comes back. <laughs> so I had a whole dorm to myself. And as much as that sounds like a good time or you got more space for yourself, it, it was very lonely, especially yes. with no COVID restrictions. It was just very isolating. And mm -hmm. some people handle it. Some people handle it better than others and I was still trying to find I, I really didn't find a place yet in a and I felt like I was just like still trying to figure out what the heck I wanted to do and then I found right. out a bar I found out about RPTS as a major and I realized like oh I love spending time I love spending time outdoors I love doing the stuff I did at Boy Scouts and I wanted to change my focus into going into National Park Service and also you know protect our environment in that way and so I, I switched over to that and I knew second semester would hopefully start to be a little bit better. And I was went back home, Thanksgiving break. And um, I met a new group of friends that kind of got me out of that rough spot or oh, they kind of, they got me out of that rough spot. 
and you know it was it was nice to have like a group that i was hanging out with at the time or that that i was spending time with doing studying talking and then just kind of felt confident going into sophomore year i had my first summer job at philmont and that's where kind of sophomore year was when i realized that friend group you know we weren't perfect in our relationship like friendship wise and i kind of realized i was very um patronizing in a way they we both our group lived pretty much different lifestyles or at least i was the one pretty much living a different lifestyle I was more proactive marathon training having to wake up early in the morning slamming assignments i wasn't a stem major anymore and i just you know we had conflicting lifestyles and it definitely at the end of the day it it, it hurt me more than anything because mm -hmm. i just didn't know how it was i was lost i basically lost my second group and it was right. just it was very depressing and mm -hmm. um it was especially for one of my closer friends that i was with at the time and i'm not gonna go too much into the details but um she lost trust in me um she misinterpreted uh, a gift that i gave her and mm -hmm. at least i thought we were friends for a long period of time and mm -hmm. or at least for enough for me to just give her a random gift of kindness and it she did not interpret like that and that led to the rest in the rest of our friends in our group kind of supporting her or at least taking her side i don't want to say they took sides but they weren't going to pick sides and it just kind of spiraled from there and mm -hmm. unfortunately my decisiveness my reactions to that and basically just the first time i ever was confronted with that kind of like that just that feeling of like i don't know what's going on it just mm -hmm. led me to hate myself it led me to you know think of myself as the problem to where i just was beating myself over and mm -hmm. over this just this problem that honestly didn't even exist it was just a mis it was it was definitely a problem that i honestly should have not been taking to heart that much and friends were trying to get me out of it and it just really wasn't working i tried you know i just didn't believe therapy would be the answer until eventually i did try therapy and then i thought that worked because i only did it for about a month and then i ended up finding a girlfriend on bumble or at least i started um i got into bumble that way and i found you know i you know, took a, took her off first date second third and we started mm -hmm. dating at that time and that was kind of like i felt like that was my bounce back after a really depressing semester or again a really depressing second um uh, really depressing like first semester for my sophomore year and subsequently um started doing the baking at that time or at least started to feel like oh my gosh like this is something like i really enjoy and you know i was you know my classes my, my classes were doing fine even during the times where i was really depressed i was really down I school was like the one thing I'm a workaholic. So it was just like, I, I did, I basically drowned myself in homework or just, mm -hmm. just that mm -hmm. study time, just trying to get done with assignments or at least trying to figure out like, where am I going to take this major? Um, when eventually like I'm, I'm getting out of college, but after that, um, sophomore year was over. Um, it felt like such a blur, um, at that point. And um that's where um junior year happened and unfortunately um that first girlfriend ended up become, ended up becoming my first ex um broke up over the phone again just kind of drowned out those those feelings those those thoughts with my internship that i had over the summer mm -hmm. and working on the cookie keep, keep and i was keep i was working on the cookie baking at, at the time too trying to create more flavors working on the recipe more and Came into a &M as a junior now, had a very much um, more smaller group of friends. And I, that's when pretty much the hate settled back in again. I did mm. think I did not, I should have stayed in therapy a lot more to talk about those feelings. And I was, I was very emotional uh, that I very much was impatient on trying to make friends. And it would just try to settle out to be like, oh, let's try to 
like hang out, do whatever, and unfortunately it gets misinterpreted. It gets um, very much seen as very rushed. They don't want to spend time with somebody that already says like, oh, let's go meet up like this coffee shop in town. It's, it was a different environment. And I lost at least another close friend because of that. And also a gr another group or at least to where it was kind of too awkward for me to start talking to them again. And mm -hmm. um, again, I was seeing myself as the problem. Of course, it didn't help that I was also trying to ace my grades. I was trying to find my foothold in a baking business as well. And oh my gosh, it just, I, I told my friends some of the stuff, or at least my friend from back home, um, my best friend back home, what goes on. And he's still surprised that um, I didn't turn to drinking like most people would. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, or at least from his experience with his friends. Right. It, it's a reality. Friend. Yeah. And yeah. I'm a part of that was just from running um, that kind of kept me sane during that whole thing, literally just going outside, crack of dawn, nobody around, and just running just yeah running to music kind of drowning it out and afterwards feeling accomplished that i just ran like 13 miles this afternoon and i i feel fine but yeah going back on topic yeah junior year that was when you know it wasn't it wasn't a low it wasn't like the lowest low but it definitely kind of opened my eye that like i need to work on myself i mm -hmm. am still at this point where I am just like, I'm angry. I'm angry at the fact that as a um, junior at A&M, that when I signed up, I was sold on this like lifestyle of like an Aggie community, an Aggie spirit, and mm -hmm. um, being a part of like the core cadets with, you know, eventually getting to um, be involved, more involved on campus and be able to take a part of those traditions getting to have like groups of friends you have class sit you know have classes with you know the names of you do homework together you hang out and here i was my junior year just in my room um you know listening to whatever listening to just um i don't know what i was listening to it was like just sad uh, um soft rock music i think some like yeah. approachy and um james taylor just alone and just waiting for the next order to come in for the cookies. Things mm -hmm. were kind of slow at the time. And then I had a good break when this, um, there was a girl from one of my classes. It was for writing physics, of course. I basically, um, I got the chance to talk about what I was doing with the cookies during class. And she, she mentioned briefly, uh, like, maybe a month ago like oh hey like you know we might do my org um on camp my org might do something with your baking in the future and i was like oh that's wonderful and i'll i'll make sure you keep it posted and then i talked to her again she was like oh yeah we would love to try your cookies and see if we can do something with that and i was like yeah um i'll give you a free sample pack like i started doing with orgs on campus and the um, the ladies from that org really loved those cookies and i'm talking they really love them to actually give me photos of them like eating the cookies and posing yeah. with them. And it kind of like revigorated me to start um, to keep on doing the baking at that time because I was thinking about, I was honestly thinking about quitting it because I, I had some good sales at first. I was um, starting to break even for my cost of starting mm -hmm. it and having to buy ingredients, but it was just like so, I hit like a slow point where yeah a whole bunch of people because i had to do that and you know it just um, a lot of people weren't following back but now there was an org that really enjoyed these cookies so much that they gave me pictures and then they sent me the you know the order to buy some for their semi event i started going back to more regularly scheduled therapy and actually having like a place to talk about some of the problems that I dealt with for, you know, my, basically my college career. And it definitely, it definitely opened up basically my insight into 
you know, you always look back in certain situations like that, those moments you have in the shower where you just recently had an argument and you just go back and you kind of like retrace your steps and thinking how you could have basically better persuaded or better, or you could have like, oh, I could yeah. have this argument. And it, it got me thinking like that again. And in a way that kind of like, okay, instead of like me trying to win, it was, what was that other person seeing in me that could have thought about me and that light? And it that's where I was talking about earlier, talking about I was way too either emotion, emotional about those or I just didn't know how to handle those feelings at the time. It was talking, it was being you know open to the fact that no one likes to be criticized about their lifestyle choices, even if statistically it's not healthy for them, it's their choice um we shouldn't be we shouldn't be uh, patronizing them for it but of course uh, at least in my eye i thought i was trying to help them out and that was not the case they don't need um someone doing that for them they don't need they don't need that and um yeah it definitely opened me up to that that con you know that way of thinking then yeah and trying to understand like okay what can i do yeah. to basically have a purpose in this life, to better myself and the people around me, to not be this kind of like this burden that I saw myself as. And mm -hmm. that was, I was kind of through the baking in a way. And it's kind of opened that door for potentially new friendships to finally make a name for myself in this um, college town of almost close to 80,000, 70,000 or 80,000 is eight, 70 or like 80,000 students when yeah. I'm not in a big or student organization or fraternity or any Greek life associations or really a part of any student government or student bodies that I recognize more than that would honestly be more, more recognizable than any bakery business that's only been started for about a year. But mm -hmm. um, again, still. So kind of face into the computer screen on the keyboard doing homework uh, typing away and again like i still have that problem of kind of like being a workaholic or i say it's a problem i say that as i'm very obsessive into my work that i forget to take breaks that i forget to have fun or that i see it as i haven't earned the right to have fun yet mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i need to work for something before actually feeling accomplished yet. And I still have this, this feeling now that kind of motivates me into keep on, you know, keep on doing this baking, keep on doing this running and all my other hobbies. But then now as a senior, I kind of realize, oh my gosh, like I really haven't lived much of the <laughs> Aggie lifestyle that I was sold on to. And right. you know, this archetype of being like a typical college student, I. I never fit that mold at all, or at least, at least the environments that I was in my freshman year, the friends that you know I lost along the way, or that were not that I'm not a part of their lives anymore. It was just kind of led me to you know I didn't want to fit that anymore. I wanted to be this kind of like own journey in a way to better myself as a person and to you know recognize the flaws that I have, but to also know that I can be capable of so much more, that yes. I may have made mistakes in the past that did affect my relationships then. So my new relationships now with friends, potentially a future significant other, it's just like, you know, I want to be a better version of myself and I got to give myself that opportunity to. I have to be vulnerable again, uh, unfortunately, but I say unfortunately, I, you know, to that, I have to be, you know, to be vulnerable with other people, to build better relationships. Yes. Maybe talk to a random classmate. And I can definitely say all these years now, I finally have, like, I'm definitely more open talking to people, like just starting yeah. conversations and just the, that feeling of kind of like anger and not understanding um, my purpose being in college camp or, you know, at A&M or in college station and like, why am I here? What am I trying to do? It right. kind of pushed me to find that answer to yeah. help, you know, for people to help me try to figure that out. 
And, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not like, I haven't cleared that hurdle yet. I've still got pretty much just like a track runner does. I still got a lot of more laps to go up, uh, laps to go. And, but compared to where it was freshman year, I am much better off than I was. And, you know, the cookie business, obviously I don't want to abuse that. <laughs> I still have my own personality at the end of the day. I still have my own life, but yeah. you know, that cookie business of mine, I want to, like I said, I want to take that back home to orange because you know, we don't have those places right. in my hometown. Um, I, right. I bake, you know, my mindset is for a lot of my cookies, even when I have leftovers, right. it's better for me to make, it's better for me to share that one cookie than for me to eat it. So at least one more person knows about what these cookies are supposed to represent. And it's for me to share my passion of baking and trying to make people smile. Yeah throughout that and yes. I try to offer a better solution than what crumble does and charging nearly five dollars for nearly a whole last cookie but great but um my journey um i want to say it's kind of just um beginning now into developing into a citizen that wants to do good in this world that wants to apply his education or apply their education into a world where Maybe there's not, they're into a more selfish kind of like self-centered world. And, you know, I can argue, I mean, someone could argue that my intentions for trying to open up my own cookie business, my hometown, and also working for the city government to make that possible is self-centered in the way, but it's, it's one that I'm, I want to take because I know if I start trying to advocate for that kind of smart, sustainable city planning and showing the unfortunate the unfortunate circumstances that led to a lot of people under the hood of cars, even last year, we're actually at the highest, um, in the past 40 years alone, right now, the United States is at the highest pedestrian fatalities um, in our, in a developed nation. And that's really unfortunate that our solution is just put people in more cars, but then anyone who couldn't afford it is just not even thought of. I mean, College Station is doing all the sidewalk building and they're not even considering that maybe someone would want some canopy shade while they're walking it during the summer where it was past here in Texas, past summer in Texas, it was like record highs of like 110 degrees. The sidewalks were apparently giving people like burns. Yeah. People accidentally mm. touched it. So it's just, uh, it sounds you know, like it's, Texas. Yeah. It's, and it's, just sometimes, it's, it's really unfortunate that, um, you know, I see a lot of people still trying to figure out what they want to do with their major, that okay. um, they're still trying to figure that out, what they want to do with their life. And mm -hmm. we all kind of have these distractions that keep us thinking about that. And the lifestyle that I had, the environments kind of pushed me to say, you need to really think about what you want to do to make sure these situations don't happen again. And yeah. that anger, that frustration, that hatred led to me trying to find a reason to make sure that doesn't happen again a reason that you know i am i'm not a burden that i can keep on finding friendships that i you know that i can live that kind of like aggy lifestyle with i still got a lot of work to go of course um still need to break some of those hurdles that mm -hmm. still keep me down to this day but um you know i'm more social because of it um, I'm going to stay here for another year or two for my master's in urban planning. That's going to allow me to keep up the baking business as well. And also pursue, you know, high quality education in a master's for urban planning. And yeah. Hopefully, you know, develop stronger friendships to, for the people that I'm talking to right now in my classes that I can make a honest relationship with, or I can just honest, just a well bonded friendship you know it's not just uh you know i'm not you know i just don't want you know for my classes a lot of the time it's just like you know one person for like one semester and it's like you never see their face again even though you might have a good time and those classes may have been fun but it's just you know at least for me i want to be able to make friends that it's like i want to be able to text them and just like hey you want to go to a coffee shop and study and then have the response that way and yeah. it's been a long, it's, it'll be, it's again, I can't rush it. It's, it's going to be a while before um, I kind of get those groups 
back again where I'm uh, confident in myself and it, it's getting there. But like I said, um, you can't rush things. They got to take time. They got to be slow. You know, hate and anger kind of develops really fast and hope takes its time. But that's what, in my opinion, that's what makes that feeling of, you know, hope stronger that things yeah. are going to get better. And, you know, you may not believe it in whatever struggles you may be personally going through right now, but mm, yeah. uh, in the words of one of the uh, um, Hashiras I listened to for Demon Slayer, uh, Rengoku, set your heart ablaze, you know, keep reminding yourself that there is a purpose for you in this world and there is an answer and it just comes down to finding it, whether it's in the office of a therapist, of a, you know, your therapist, or yeah. it's literally out in the streets of College Station realizing there's a problem that um, there's so much priority on cars that people are literally dying uh, from, mm -hmm. or it could be while you're in the kitchen and you enjoy yeah. people trying your food. It's, uh, you know, it takes time. Don't expect it to be instant, but once you, once you start catching that feeling that this is something you enjoy, then you should pursue it. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, ended it on a perfect note. Oh, my gosh. Logan, thank you for sharing. Seriously, a lot, a lot, a lot of people can relate to exactly what you were saying. Um, there's definitely some moments where I was definitely relating to. I'm sure you could tell by my facial expressions, mm -hmm. but um, hmm, it um, there's a couple things that you said that honestly I needed to hear. Um, it was like two things that you said. That's why I was also writing things down. By the way, um, I was writing down timestamps so that I personally can go back and just listen to um, because I needed to hear, I needed that reminder, how about that? And though it was like a couple things that really, four things, one, two, three, four, five, six things that strongly related to me, um, I really didn't need to hear it. So thanks, Logan. Yep, anytime. Oh. So Logan, I know we're running out of time because it's almost uh, about to hit an hour, and that's when the software will cut off. Um, yeah, but that's okay. Dude, this has been a marvelous episode. Um, before the software updated and stuff like that, I was able to do over an hour. But um, here we are. Uh, we love a good update. Um, yeah, dude. Okay, so any final thoughts that you wish to share? Uh, with someone, any words of encouragement that you wish to share with someone, or did you already just did we cover everything? I do have a couple words, and I have no idea if any of the people in my life currently will actually hear this. Um, for some of the people, they they ask if I kind of stayed like, oh, I was in the core dorms my freshman year, and they're like, are you in the core? I was like, I'm still, I'm still very hesitant talking about that. I was in the core, but you know, they're going to find out that like, oh yeah, I actually was in the court and mm -hmm. I'm going to have to explain them that whole situation. But um, for the people that, um, you know, were, um, you know, for the friendships that I was in, for the people and groups that I was a part of and I'm no longer not, um, I hope you're doing well. And um, thank you for, you know, an opportunity for realizing that I could be a much better person at the end of the day that I can be I could be someone much more and that yeah. I have gifts that I should share with other people I'm, I'm not even joking I'm literally tearing up that would <laughs> wow dude that is um very wise and very mature of you and I just want to recognize that um Wow. Um, sorry, I'm like 
trying to hold in tears, even though I know I shouldn't be trying to hold it. Um, no, it it's healthy to cry. No, it's healthy to cry. It's, it's healthy, healthy to, to cry. cry. Exactly. It's healthy for guys to cry. We need to break this barrier. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Hence the podcast. <laughs> That's something I've definitely been uh, working on is um, I can verbally easily communicate um, what I'm feeling and what I'm going through. But like physically showing it, it's always been a struggle for me. Less of a struggle now, but it's always been a struggle. Like I'm at the point now where I'm able to tear up in front of people. I think that's huge. Um, I tear up about anything, anything um, good. Like if the per if I see someone crying, I'm tearing up. <laughs> I'm tearing up. Like that's just that's just me. I'm glad I'm, to be at that point. Um, shows a lot about you know the softness of someone's heart um which i'm so glad because my heart used to be very 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 hard um so it was it was not it's like i wasn't human i was too busy trying to be uh trying to fit a societal matrix that was taught to me by our past generations so here i am yeah. um yeah all dude. glory yeah ha, all the glory Logan, thank you so much for your maturity and wisdom. It takes a lot um, to get to that point to, you know, reflect back on things that didn't work out um, and to see, you know, the blessings that the burden uh, has brought you. Um, we recognize it. I recognize it, Logan. That's huge. Not many people are at that stage yet. So that's really huge of you, Logan. Seriously. Um, thank you. We love learning and we love therapy. Alrighty, folks. Um, with that being said, that has been another episode of Vulnerability Time. Um, Logan's business will be in the episode description below. Um, even if this is five years from now, um, go ahead and contact Logan through his um, um, business DM if you right. wish to collab or work with him. Because Logan, this is going to be out there forever, so it's going to be a slow, you know, a slow exposure mm -hmm. to. Um, your platform so don't be surprised if in like a year or two years from now this lands this episode will land on the right ears when it comes to you know um, collaborations and stuff like that um folks um if no one has told you today that you are lovable that you are valuable and that i am so happy and proud of you for still being on this earth please allow me to be the first folks and allow yourself to be the second um, another challenge, folks, I want you to message someone right now and just let them know that you care about them. I'm going to do it as soon as this episode ends. I'm not going to forget this time, folks. Y'all know I forget everything. I'm not going to forget this time. Um, also, follow, like, subscribe. Send this um, out to someone. Send this podcast out to someone. The more exposure this podcast is, the more... Uh, lives will be healed, more encouragement, the more lives can be saved. Um, remember, folks, that's the point of the podcast. It's, we're just human beings trying to make it through this um, earth. <sighs> Alrighty, folks, see you later. Talk to you next time on whatever that episode will be.